G'day everyone, good morning. It's uh, Monday morning here um, in Australia and I hope you're all doing well. Today what I thought I would do is start to um, pick apart some of my bigger presentations, some of the stuff that I do at conferences and venues and, and give you a little condensed version of that um, each Monday morning. So today we're going to start off with um, startups, the stuff that nobody tells you. And so what I've done is just um, this presentation normally goes for an hour and a half, so I'm going to give it to you in five minutes. So it's just very much the greatest hits, kind of the high level view of um, 10 different things that people don't tell you when you go into the startup world or, or start your own business or have this amazing idea for an amazing business. And, and so I'm going to tell you the truth. Um, now, uh, and I know this because I've built and sold a few startups of my own. I work um, a lot in the startup ecosystem in Australia and, and around the world with different um, entry level, different sort of early stage startups as well as more developed startups as well. Um, and I've seen people make a lot of mistakes and I have made a lot of mistakes. So I want to um, maybe uh, stop you from making some of those today or, or at least um, you know, change your thinking about uh, what you can expect, or what's what's good, what's not good, what works, what doesn't work, and so on. So, number one, your startup is not the next dot dot dot, the next Snapchat, the next Facebook, the next Uber, the next whatever. Your startup is the first dot dot dot. This is a really important thing to get in your head because if you're always trying to create the next Uber, the next Facebook, the next Twitter, the next Snapchat, the next whatever, then you're always going to be benchmarked against it by everyone else. But worse, you're always going to be benchmarked against that yourself, you know, in, in your own heart and in your own head. And if you don't achieve the same success as one of these, you know, potential unicorn startups that's doing great guns and is, is really wildly funded and whatever, and that doesn't happen to you in the first year or the first week, then you're going to be very down on yourself. It's going to be very hard for you. So try not to compare yourself to others, both as a startup founder or a tech guy or a small business person, whoever you are, but also not your business. Try not to benchmark your business and compare your business against some other great thing that you've seen and, and you want to be the next of it. You're not the next dot, dot, dot. You're the first dot, dot, dot. Okay. Second thing is Zuck didn't know he was building Facebook. Right, the guys, the guys who put together these things don't don't go. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna start a social network that's going to have uh, 1.6 billion people use it every month, and or more billion people sign into it every day. He did have an ambition to make the world more open and connected and create something that would help that. No, no doubt about it. But there's no way he could have known, looked into the future, and seen the success of something like that. Neither could the guys from Snapchat. Neither could the guys from Uber. Neither could the guys from whoever. Right. So if you're going into it with that mindset, you're going to be disappointed, okay? But if you're going into it with a mindset of, look, this is what I want to create. This is where I think your need is. This is where I think, you know, people are going to use this product. I'm going to have customers, whatever. Then, you know, you're going to create that. You're not going to create some unicorn success thing. You're going to create the thing that people need. And that could potentially turn into something like that. But if you start out that way, you are setting yourself up to fail, okay? The third thing is something I call the five people test, right? A lot of people come to me with their ideas and they say, oh, or, you know, they send me a text or send me a message or a thing and say, oh, I've got this great idea. What do you think of this? This new startup idea or this new business idea. And I reckon you can, what, if you're in this space, if you're in the space where you haven't built anything yet, but you've got this great idea or what you think is a great idea, you need to tell five people, just five. And if... All of those five say, do you know what? That's a great idea. Why hasn't someone done that? Then you know it's a good idea. If all five say, that's not a, I'm not buying that, or that sounds complicated, or that's unnecessary, who needs that? That's a shit idea, whatever they might say, then obviously you need to go back to the drawing board. And then you need to find a medium somewhere between one and five of the how many yeses and how many Ugh. Uh, looks you get before you decide whether it's a good idea or not. But five people will, will tell you, five people who are a pretty good cross-section of your customer base and society in general will be able to give you a, that very early, very, very early market research um, that you can then sort of go on with. Now, I, I don't think you should just show five people and then spend a million dollars building something, but 
just in that early stage of, is this a good idea or not? Like, you know, whatever, then that's the way that, um, you know, you, you, you can really see whether it's a good idea or not. <sighs> Number four is <laughs> pretty important. You're not going to make any money for a long time. Okay. So if you think you're going to start this startup and you know, next month you're going to get a million dollars in funding, you might, I hope you do. But you know, if, if not, then you're going to be disappointed, right? If, if you don't have a long-term view of even the smallest small business, if you don't have a long-term view of when you're going to start to be profitable or making money, you are going to be disappointed. You are not going to make money for a long time. You can make a lot of money down the track, right? And that track might just be a month or a year or two years or 10 years or 25 years. It's, you know, you, if you think you're going to make money overnight, you are almost certainly going to be disappointed, right? So have a long-term view, be patient, build something that people want. That's what your focus should be. Number five, this comes back to showing five people and starting to talk about your idea before you built it. A lot of people say, say to me, you know, oh, I've got to, um, I, I, want this, I want to share this idea, but you have to sign a non-disclosure agreement because, because I don't want anyone to steal my ideas. Nobody is going to steal your idea, right? It, I've never seen it. I've, I've never had anyone steal any of my ideas until after I've built something. Nobody's going to go, you know what? That is a great idea that you've told me in confidence or even at the pub. I'm going to rush out right now and make it before you do. That just, it, it just doesn't happen. It happens in movies. It just doesn't happen in real life. People are concentrating on their own shit without worrying about how to build yours, right? Try to get that out of your head. It's, it'll drive you mad. Right? Nobody's going to steal your idea. Just go ahead and build it or not. But don't freak out and worry every day about, you know, the, the spies from some competitor coming in and building stuff because it's just not happening. Right. Number six, build, being your boss, right? Being your own boss is ridiculously hard. And a lot of us go from corporate Corporate land, right? Where you have a boss and you report up and whatever. You might even be the boss of a whole lot of people in that space. But then you leave and you start up your, your startup idea or your new business. And you become not only your boss, but the boss of the whole entire thing. And there's no one else you know, reporting up to you. There's, there's no one who can, you can hide the buck with. The buck stops with you. And being your own boss for some people, including me, is extremely hard. So think about how you're going to structure your business and how long you're going to be your own boss for because it is ridiculously hard and it could bring, you, bring your business and yourself undone, right? Number seven, it's all consuming. If you're going to create a startup, particularly a tech startup, you need to be completely prepared for everyone in your life to hate you at some point because you're still working on that bloody thing or you know you haven't you haven't seen the kids or you didn't get the milk or you whatever right you are you are totally and utterly consumed by it and if you're not up for that then get out right now because at some stage in the early startup you are going to have to commit to it and commit a lot of time to it and everybody around you your your partner your children your friends your whatever they have to be on board or they're going to be really, really annoyed, right? So just, it's not a negative thing necessarily, but it's just something you need to know that it's going to be all consuming. So be prepared for that, all right? Number eight, finding customers is the hardest thing in the world, right? You can build, you can get something developed, you can build an amazing product, you can build an amazing business and whatever, and you think it's awesome. Of course you do, right? And other people might tell you it's awesome. And, and you might get some, some media attention and the media attention tells you it's awesome. But you haven't got any bloody customers, which means you're not getting money in the till, which means you are disappointed and you can't keep developing, you can't keep building, you can't stay in business. Too many of us focus on the thing and not focus on the story. Right, not focus on the storytelling aspect that's going to get people to be your customer. Customers, finding customers is the hardest thing in the world and you should put almost all of your effort into that. But we don't, we put all of our effort into 
building some beautiful shiny thing that's developed, you know, whatever. So think about how you're going to find your customers before you spend a second building anything. Think about your customer acquisition strategy, right? Number nine, be prepared to fail and bail. You need in your head, when you, or not in your head, written down, formalized. When you start this process of putting a business together, starting a new company, especially if it's a tech startup or something like that, you need to have a point down the track somewhere, which is the point of no return. This is the, this is the day that if I haven't achieved these KPIs or if I don't have this much funding or I haven't got this much money in the till, or if my wife is still missing me or whatever, I'm, I'm out. I'm bailing, I'm gonna say, I failed, I gave it a crack, I didn't work, I'm out. Too many times, I've seen this time and time and time again with small business and with startup, our ego gets in the way of us and it won't let us fail. Particularly if you're Gen X, like I am, if you're Generation X like I am, we will fight and fight and fight and fight and lose everything instead of just walking away and going, do you know what? That was a shit idea, or I did that poorly, or whatever it might be. Gen Y is much better at this than, than us. But if your generation next you will fight and you'll hang on and hang on and hang on and hang on and then you'll have lost everything. So have in your mind that you are A, prepared to fail, and B, prepared to bail at some time down the track. Okay? And the last thing, number 10, <laughs> this is really hard to hear, right? for small business and startup people who are completely obsessed about their stuff and their own business and they think it's the best thing in the world and they think everybody should be on board and why, you know, everybody needs it and everybody should love it. The truth of it is nobody cares about your startup or about your idea or about your business or about your product or service. Nobody cares about it as much as you do. Your wife doesn't, your husband doesn't, your kids certainly don't, your friends don't care, the media doesn't care, the customers don't even care as much as you do. And if you are gonna wear that hard on your sleeve, you're gonna be disappointed, and you're gonna be let down, and you're gonna feel like the world hates you, and, and, it's, and it's really not great for the little monkey up here who's just waiting for an excuse to kick into action, right? So don't feed the monkey, right? Be be in your head right from the start, have in your head that nobody is going to care about this venture and this idea and this product and this service, whatever. Nobody's gonna care about it as much as me. Because then when people don't, you won't be devastated. Okay, so running through them one to 10, I've got the list right here. One, one to 10, um, your startup is not the next anything, your startup is the first, dot, dot, dot. Second thing, Zuck didn't know he was building Facebook. Right, you don't know what you don't know. You don't. You can't possibly look down the, into the future and see whether you're going to be success or failure. And if you're going to be success, how big you an success you're, go, success you're going to be. You just need to build something that people want. Okay. Third thing, the five people test. Ask five people if your idea is shit. Only five, right at the start. Four, you're not going to make any money for a long time. Right. Five, nobody is going to steal your idea. Calm down. Nobody is going to steal your idea. Nobody ever has. In the, in the entire time that I've been working in small business and startups, I've never seen it once. So nobody's doing that. Six, being your own boss is ridiculously hard. Get used to it or get a boss. <laughs> Seven, it's all consuming. It's going to consume your life and your family's life. Be ready for that. Number eight, finding customers is the hardest thing in the world. The hardest thing in the world. So you need a customer acquisition strategy before you spend a cent or a second on putting together a product, right? Nine, be prepared to fail and bail. And 10, nobody is going to care about it as much as you do. I hope you found this useful. If you think it is useful, and if you think somebody else in your network might find this video useful too, please click on share just below here and share it out to your network. I would be really, really grateful, thank you. Um, and if you have some comments, if you think I've left some out, which I, obviously I have, I've been giving you 10 things that people should know, um, I'd love you to com comment under this as well so other people might benefit from your wisdom as well. Um, and 
I really hope you have a great Monday wherever you are in the world. Um, thank you very much for your support of my, of my stuff. We're selling uh, the first tickets today in my national tour of Australia, New Zealand and Singapore for the uh, Think, De Think Different, Be Better tour. Tickets are going on sale today for Brisbane uh, and then through this week for the rest of the things. So if anybody is up for uh, coming to see a show uh, that's uh, very, very different to anything I've put, put together before, I'd love to see you there. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. That's the 10 things that I think people should know before they go into a startup. If you've got any, please tell me what they are and have a great Monday. Find your kindness today and share some on yourself. See you guys.